All right, here we go. Welcome. I'm so excited to be here with all of you and be celebrating the grand reopening of City Hall Park. Um, feels like we have just a, a little break in the weather here. In general, I'm blaming Doreen for this and her <laughs> desire to see the interactive stormwater art exhibit working uh, fully. At least that's a benefit from it. But uh, sorry we don't have better weather for you, but we got a lot else. Let's dive right in. Um, and I, let me do just say, um, if people can be mindful of, uh, uh, I see almost, I see everyone's got masks on. We're all gonna have our masks on except when we're, we're speaking. Thank you for that. Try to, try to keep distance uh, be between yourself. We got a big enough space here. I think we can do it. So here we go. In her seminal book, The Death and Life of Great American Cities, Jane Jacobs revealed the rarely mentioned unfortunate truth that many parks fail to achieve the promise that they represent. For every vibrant city park, she observed, there are dozens of dispirited city vacuums called parks eaten around with decay, little used, unloved. To be great spaces, she wrote, city parks, quote, need the boon of life conferred upon them. That was the core problem we were trying to solve with the transformation of this park, to give it more life. For many years, City Hall Park was amazing on summer Saturdays with the farmer's market here, and much of the rest of the time, it was dramatically underused. The park's design and amenities did not draw people into it. Soils were eroded and compacted, and the lighting and lack of activity left many potential park users with a sense of unease, and they didn't come in. We could see that there are ways that improving the design could help City Hall Park both withstand better the times of heavy use and be more welcoming for other types of uses too. We knew we could create features that would help more people enjoy it, from spaces and amenities to support eating and small gatherings throughout the day, to improved accessibility, to a fountain that would be a destination for families, to more benches so that people could sit and talk, to a range of different spaces for music and cultural programming. This was the opportunity that the community called on us to make good on in 2011 during the Imagine City Hall Park public engagement process led by Burlington City Arts that involved hundreds of members of the public. We knew it wouldn't be easy. There had been prior efforts to address these issues over the decades that had not been successful. And sure enough, over the years since this administration committed to getting this done, we faced many challenges. Soil conditions drove up the cost dramatically. Resolving important decisions about trees and expanding sidewalk and event hard surface areas added time and brought con some controversy. When in the summer of 2018, after eight years of active planning, the city council made the decision to send this project back to a new committee to consider design changes again, there were a lot of people who doubted that this would ever happen, that we would ever get to today. However, we stuck with it. We addressed the rising costs by finding new philanthropic and institutional funding sources and taking some of the work in-house and doing so in a way that kept the cost of taxpayers under a million dollars. We sustained the will and focus, and today we know that it was worth it. At long last, we have a public space at the physical and cultural heart of Burlington that is alive, that is worthy of this great community, and that is accessible and welcoming to all. A park that is truly built for everyone. So, you know, having addressed some of the project's history, I just want to reflect a little longer on this present moment. We are gathered today seven months into a pandemic. We are wearing masks. We are keeping physical distance from each other. We are going about our daily lives in ways we never imagined at this time last year. We have plans to use this new space in the remaining months of this pandemic, which we hope are short, to keep our downtown vibrant, and to help sustain the many small businesses and organizations that are facing massive challenges right now. As people start to experience this revitalized park, I hope it will serve as a beacon of renewal and remind us that there will be life on the other side of this pandemic and that our city 
will get through this and truly, not just Red Eric, truly will be stronger on the other side. Finally, the history of pandemics suggests that once we do get to that other side, it will quickly become hard to remember the loss, the uncertainty, and the dramatic disruption of our lives that COVID has wrought. That is why today I am dedicating the park renovations to the Burlington residents who we have lost to this coronavirus. We have a plaque here that is gonna be installed just on the other side of the plaza that will be permanently installed. And I'd like to read it to you. Here's what it says. A comprehensively redesigned City Hall Park reopened after a year of construction amidst the largest global pandemic in 100 years. At the time of the opening, the city had been living under an emergency order for more than six months. Masks were required in all public spaces and group gatherings were severely restricted. This park renovation is dedicated to the Burlingtonians who died as a result of the novel COVID-19 coronavirus. In the years to come, as children play in jets of water and crowds assemble to enjoy each other and our city's great music, food, and events, let us never forget that these joyous scenes are fragile and that their continuation can only be guaranteed through an ongoing, vigilant commitment to public health and to science. We are joined today, I believe, um, if you could raise your hands, by Ross Farnsworth, the director of the Burlington Health and Rehab, and Alicia uh, DeMario. Ross and De Alicia, they're in the, in the back. Uh, um, Alicia, I, I may have neglected to say, is the director of Birchwood Terrace. And thank you for joining us today, and I hope you will convey to all the families who have lost the lost loved ones in the early months of the pandemic that we are thinking of them and their loss today. Finally, I'd like to close by um, a pretty uh, substantial um, round of acknowledgements. You don't have a project that um, takes this long and involves uh, this much effort that uh, doesn't require taking the time to thank a lot of people. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to do that here. I'm sure we won't quite get everyone, but we are gonna thank a bunch of people. First of all, I, I wanna thank the city team. This project has been a feat of cross-departmental collaboration um, that goes beyond, I think, anything else we've undertaken together in the last, in the last eight plus years. And it includes the Parks, Recreational Waterfront Department, Burlington City Arts, the Department of Public Works, and the Water Resources Division of DPW in particular, it involves CETO and the Office of City Planning, and there are certainly things that, had to be, that the City Attorney's Office spent a lot of time with. Basically, just about everyone in every uh, department uh, ended up playing an important role before this was done. I'm particularly grateful to Laura Wheelock, Engineer and Project Manager Extraordinaire, for steering this project through complicated soils remediation work. Where is Laura? Thank you, Laura. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and for delivering this uh, project, Laura, I, I think it's important to say on time and, and on budget, uh, but for the delays caused by um, the, the pandemic itself, this construction pr proceeded exactly as it was supposed to. And how many other city projects you actually see the pr budget coming down over the course of construction? I haven't seen it before. Thank you for what you did. Uh, I want to thank, and we're going to hear from in a moment, uh, VJ Komai, who on his very first days on the job as city arborist plunged right into the controversy, had to go to public meetings to speak about the trees in this park. The passion of VJ and his team have, com have contributed immeasurably to this project, and, even, and, and he helped in ways as well that it helped deal with the budget challenges, taking uh, some of the, the work for the plantings and the trees in-house. He's been out here day after day in recent months getting ready for this beautiful opening. Thank you, VJ, and thank you for your whole team. I want to thank the rest of the parks team who put great care into thinking through how to maintain this park and keep it as welcoming as it is today, not just on opening day, but every day going forward. 
Um, and who and the water resources team who I mentioned, they work to ensure that the project would sustainably improve stormwater management in our downtown core. It's a big issue right in the core, the management of stormwater. And these beautiful gardens around us are not just pretty. They're not just here to, uh, to enhance the experience of being here. They also play an important function in protecting Lake Champlain. And I want to thank the Burlington City Arts team for their thought about how to bring this park alive through arts and cultural programming. There are so many partners that played a role in getting to today and helped build support for the project and shape it in important ways over time. I want to call out the Preservation Trust of Vermont and AARP for being key partners. And I particularly want to recognize the Burlington Business Association and Kelly Devine. Kelly, where are you? And there she is, Kelly, for um, all that you did uh, throughout the history of this project to, to get us today and, and in tr true partnership to, to make this an important part and successful part of downtown. This project has involved vision and technical skill from designers, architects, and contractors. Thank you to Wag Wagner Hodgson, Sussman, Landshapes, SD Ireland, Du Bois and King, Waite, Hendel, and others. We wouldn't have gotten today without the support of generous private donors who helped imp add important features to this park. Um, and without whose help, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, it would be a very different place. Uh, I particularly want to thank Tony Pomerlo. We're thinking of him today. And we have Ernie Pomerlo here, who in his own right has been a great champion of this project and so many others, and who we'll, we'll be hearing from in a moment. We're so thankful for the civic commitment of the Pomerlo Foundation, the, the Pomerlo family. And I also want to thank the PCOR family, which made an important contribution to get us over the final financial hurdles as well. So thank, thank you to all those partners and all that team. Uh, I, sorry, I, two other important bodies that played a key role in getting us today making this project better. The city council was highly engaged in this project from start to center to, to, to finish. I see Councilor Mason here with us who went through every step of the way over the last eight, eight years. Um, thank you, Councilor Mason. I'm sure I, I can't, I haven't seen her yet, but I'm sure Councilor, is Councilor Paul, if she, is Councilor Paul here? She, if she isn't here in person, she's here in spirit and has played a great role rounding up uh, philanthropic contributions for some of the benches that are here. Um, if any other city councilors that I can't quite see with the mask and the umbrellas, can you raise your hand? I see new city councilor Sarah Carpenter is here. Um, and we have Franklin Paulino here as well. And Brian Pine is standing there in the back. Thank you, Brian, for being here. Brian was on the inside on the city team when this started and played a role then. Thank you to the city council for the partnership and saying thank you to the Burlington Parks Commission, which also played a key role. And I believe Nancy Kaplan, who was the chair for some critical years and was a great champion of this project is also here. So one more time, let's have a big round of applause for all the partners that got us today. So now I will turn the podium over to someone who has seen the potential of this project from the very beginning, who went out and got a big grant from the National Endowment of the Arts to get this process, the Imagine City Hall Park process, kicked off in 2011, the great Doreen Craft. Doreen. What fun, what fun. Thank you, Moreau. Um, there probably isn't a person here today who's standing who doesn't need to be thanked if anyone is ever overlooked in these gatherings, please know that it, you are deeply with us because it did take a village to bring this beautiful civic space to life. Though discussed informally for some years, it was in 2010 that a group of citizens, neighbors, business owners, and park lovers finally declared that City Hall Park was not serving its purpose as the central public plaza and green space in the downtown of Burlington. There was deterioration and neglect in a space that many thought was the gateway to our city. And we knew we could and must do better. With oversight from the city administration, the Burlington Business Association, Parks Department, 
Police Department, Preservation Trust of Burlington, King Street Center. Tom Levitt, then at the Merchants Bank, now at Northfield Savings Bank. Ernie Pomerlo and his family, along with an army of dedicated citizens who formed a task force to commit our energy to realizing a park that better represented the natural beauty, cultural compassion, and diversity of Burlington. Funded with a grant from the NEA, Imagine City Hall Park was a nine-month engagement process that leveraged art as a driving force, collecting the multifarious needs, designs, and ideas that our community had and distilled them with an abundance of creativity into a single space. With rain gardens, stormwater mitigation, expanded access, interactive installations, historical preservation, and flexible event space that is available to every single citizen. I think we then have more than achieved our goal. This park is beyond beautiful, even in the rain. In the midst of the pandemic and a long overdue national conversation on racial equity, I have come to more deeply appreciate our parks and wildways, the green spaces throughout our urban core. Our parks are who we are. They bring us together to converse, to play, to relax, and to consider ways forward in shaping the future. I am so proud that this public civic space is blessed with the intentions of thousands of Burlingtonians and Vermonters. But our work on City Hall Park is still unfinished. The park is and should remain a work in progress, one that will need us and generations to follow, to nurture it, to engage it, to protect it, so that it continue to tell the ever-progressing story of who we are as a city. In closing, I want to thank a few more people. I want to thank Sarah Katz from my team, who is in charge of the public art installations and the gorgeous work that you will take a tour on today with Cat Clear, Tessa O'Brien, artist. I want to thank Zach Williams and uh, his team for all that you have done to create spaces in this park that will allow many, many types of public engagement and display. I want to thank Heather Farrell because now for the gallery, the BCA Center Gallery, this is a new backyard and a much larger responsibility of what that gallery will mean to this city park. I want to thank the Water Wheel Found. Beth Montori Rolls, thank you so much for your amazing leadership and contribution to making this park possible. And to my board members and leadership, Lori Rowe and Fran Stoddard, you're amazing. To all my colleagues, I love you. Hello everybody, I'm Tom Levitt. I'm president of Northfield Savings Bank. I grew up at 1888 North Avenue, Burlington, Vermont. Then it was 05401, now 05408. And uh, I had the pleasure of standing here at this location on the occasion of our nation's uh, bicentennial with uh, Mayor Gordon Paquette as he dedicated a brand new city park fountain. And I was with my girlfriend, now my wife of many years, Diane, just freshly out of uh, Burlington High School, so the seahorse spirit lives. Um, and it, we live again in a, a beautiful new space that came to be because of our community citizens and many community investors. And I'm delighted to be here with Ernie today um, as one of those key investors in this project, but it really took so many hands over that 10 year period. I want to thank Kelly Devine and the Burlington Business Association for their leadership, for the way they rally the best in business principles. We are all corporate citizens as we stand here in this great city. And this gem, this treasure, is, is brought about because we have vital business in the city of Burlington, because we have people that are employers and paying taxes and providing capital to this city, so that all can be included and that we can all stand here today and celebrate such a beautiful asset to our community. It is our front yard. I think that the vitality of this park going forward is really going to be important. 
the fact that we do want it to be safe, we want it to be healthy, we want it to be totally inclusive. So Northfield Savings Bank, I'm proud to have some of our team members here, uh, will be underwriting programming in this park, not only this fall, but all through next year, to make sure we're reaching out to community organizations across the spectrum here in Burlington, bringing these young people and some not so young to the park so they can showcase their soul, so they can showcase their creativity and their arts here in this space. So I am very proud to be affiliated with that effort, uh, to have Northfield Savings Bank as a good neighbor across the street, uh, being part of this, uh, not only today, but in the future. Uh, a, a healthy City Hall Park equals a healthy Burlington. So thank you all, and uh, thank you, Mayor Weinberger, for your leadership. Hi, I'm Catherine Monstream, and I have a gallery across the way, and I'm a painter. And if we were at a wedding today, we would say that this is really good luck, because the gods are <laughs> crying tears of joy, as we all are. Um, what I love about this space is there is room for everyone at this park. There are new corners, nooks, more benches. There's perennial gardens, and the orientation of all the structures is so welcoming to locals and visitors alike. And to me, I don't know why, but it looks bigger. I don't, does everybody think it looks bigger? It's now a true destination, something I probably wouldn't have said before. And it's just what a great city like Burlington needs a true city hall park. We can be proud of it now, and when friends and family come to visit, we will take them to the waterfront, Church Street, we'll be down at the Moran plant, maybe the 40-foot uh, um, filing cabinet, but now this will be part of our tour when we bring people here, and it will be a great place for people to visit. When the first designs were proposed, some folks resisted. And what I think we forget is that Shelburne Farms isn't naturally beautiful. And you're like, of course it is. It's this gorgeous swath of land on the lake shores of Lake Champlain. But every tree, every shrub, every curve of the road was planned and designed. So while Frederick Olson wasn't available, we were lucky to have the good design and creative eye of Wagner Hodgson, who put together this amazing design, solid landscape architecture. And that's what we needed to reimagine this space, is true design. Um, personally, we are so lucky. We, across the street, we look out on the, from the gallery, we have big windows and we see the silver maple and watching this progress has been incredible. We're sort of like little kids at a construction site each day looking, a new pallet of rocks, the sod trucks. When the trucks came with grass, we were like just jumping for joy. So it's been really surprisingly pleasant <laughs> to be a business on the perimeter of this park during this transition. Um, I wanna thank the city for making that effort because certainly we had some hesitation about what would it be like during this for our little business. And I think all of us would agree that the, the parking was sort of maintained as best it could. It was relatively dust free and entertaining every day. So I'm really grateful for all the work that happened to make uh, our business um, be able to stay open. And um, I also want to thank my family for being here today, Tor, Sylvie, Nils, and my husband Al, because this has been like their playground and now we haven't been able to come here and I can't wait to buy them all lunch, have a picnic. I promise them euros from KKD. <laughs> thank you. Hi, I'm Jeff Hodson from Wagner Hodson Landscape Architecture. Um, City Hall Park has evolved since the late 1800s when it was pretty much just a, a, a green. And over the decades, uh, crisscrossing paths were added. Um, at least two different fountains have lived in this park. And, um, you know, while, while modifying a beloved park is not always the easiest job to take on, um, it's definitely one of the most satisfying um, and we've really enjoyed the process and are really happy with with the results I want to mention Amy Houghton is in the audience she was the project manager for our office thank you Amy for everything um, 
some of the, the new park features I wanted to point out, um, making the, the park more accessible was, was always a big goal. And um, we were able to achieve that through shifting walkways around. Um, we improved greatly the ecological health of the park. There were a lot of contaminated soils in the park. They were replaced, um, aerated the trees. We added uh, over um, 600 shrubs and 900 perennials and introduced a lot of new tree species. Um, and also the rain gardens that have been mentioned, they can handle, I think it's 90% of the rainfall that happens that falls on the park and it also treats uh, half of St. Paul Street. So um, that's really important for the, for the city because it takes that, that capacity out of the combined sewer system and it allows the water to uh, recharge into the soil. Uh, the high efficiency lighting that we've put in through the park adds safety and atmosphere. Um, and the seating options, we've added a lot of seat walls, benches, but also movable furniture, which uh, in these COVID times is turning out to be even more important than we ever realized. Uh, and also the Portland Loo, the bathroom, um, a very uh, high tech prefab, well thought out uh, amenity for the park. Before I go, I just want to thank the countless city staff that helped make this possible. And like Moreau said, it was almost every department, I think. Um, but also the contractors and subcontractors that took you know, a 70 page, 70 uh, sheet construction set and brought it to life, uh, creating this park. They were amazing to work with, SD Ireland, Landshapes, and uh, John Turner Consulting. So thank you very much. Hi, I'm VJ Gomai, and I am the city arborist. Um, as Mayor Weinberger said, my very first day on the city payroll was the first DRB meeting reviewing the plans for this park. It was a packed house. Um, I me immediately found myself at the center of what would become a very long and very spirited debate about the future of this park. I learned some things very quickly that night. The first thing I learned was why my predecessor decided to retire when he did. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm laughing now. <laughs> I also learned that Burlington residents are really, really passionate about their public spaces. But at the same time, I learned that the city team that had been working on this project for years before I got here that, as has been said, involved people from departments across the city were equally as passionate about our public spaces and were committed to making this park the best that it could be. In the wink, weeks and months that followed that first meeting, I spent a great deal of time in this park evaluating the health of the existing trees. I studied the plans for the park's reconstruction I did a lot of research on my own. I met regularly with the whole city team and the design team. And I listened very closely to all the concerns that were being raised in the public process. <clears throat> I ultimately came to the realization from an ecological standpoint that this park was failing badly. It was quite sick. Many of the existing trees were in severe decline and it had been in decline for years. The soils throughout much of the park were very compacted and were degrading by the year and with each passing storm. And my agenda throughout this process was to ensure that the plans to redesign this park would address the issues that had led to the park's decline over time. And that ultimately the work that we did here would strike a balance between the public use of the space and the long-term ecological health and sustainability of the park for generations to come. Fortunately, I've been in this business, I've been in this profession for more than 30 years. I started when I was like six. Um, we've learned a lot in 40 years through science and research. 
We've learned about the importance of mitigating stormwater runoff and how to incorporate plants into built structures to help make that happen. We learned about more about the proper planting of trees to ensure their long-term health and which species are best suited to specific sites in urban settings. We've learned of new innovations that allow us <clears throat> to incorporate trees into hardscape areas and provide them with the soil volumes they need to grow to maturity, very important. We've learned about the importance of having a diversity of species of trees in an urban space, as well as a diversity of age classes of trees. And we've learned about the importance of supporting the health of our native pollinator populations, which have really been known to be suffering in recent years, and how to use native plants to supply them with the food and habitat that they need to thrive and survive. We believe in science. So we incorporated all of what we have learned into the design and reconstruction of the park. And I think the results are visible today. <clears throat> the ecological health of this park has been restored. And, it, and I'm confident that it's been done in such a way that it will be sustainable and will thrive for future generations. And I look forward over the next several years and, and hopefully decades watching this park thrive. We planted 22 new trees, <clears throat> hundreds of new shrubs, and 3,345 or 35 perennials and ornamental grasses. By completing the plantings with our in-house staff, we were able to source all of the shrubs and all the perennials and grasses from two local growers. So we supported our local economy at a time when we all know that was probably more important than ever. And not only that, it, it greatly reduced our carbon footprint because we weren't trucking these plants in from great distances. And the growers we worked with are as passionate as they come and as good as what they do, and it's evident in the plants that you see here today. A large percentage of the plants and trees are species native to our region, and thus they're well suited to the site and will support our native pollinators while providing a display of color from May through October. The aeration and mitigation of the soils throughout the park, in addition to the state-of-the-art irrigation system, will ensure the long-term health of the trees and turf. It's been a real pleasure for me to be a part of this team to make this happen. I've learned a lot, you know, people from across all departments, got to know everybody really quickly. But I, I especially want to acknowledge members of our Parks and Recreation Department. They're kind of behind the scenes that helped get us here today. So there's our park leadership, Cindy, Cindy White, our director, and Derek Roach, our head of uh, facilities and, and our facilities and maintenance supervisor, for their guidance and support along the way, to our parks planning team who weighed in throughout the design and construction process, to our facilities crew who were here the last two weeks fixing, you know, putting the finishing touches on everything from hanging banners to trash receptacles and all the above. They've been training on the new irrigation system and fountain system and its upkeep and maintenance and moving forward they're going to take on that responsibility to our grounds crew who you know has already implemented an intensive program for taking care of the turf in the park and especially to my tree crew who took on this project with me never question it brought their passion and expertise every day and, and they're still talking to me, so <laughs> I'm happy about that, so thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Ernie Pommel. I'm here with a number of our members of our family to celebrate this moment with all of you. And I think it's really important, again, I know we've done this, but Moreau, your, your, your efforts and the amazing team around you in the city, um, I need to thank you for your vision, but most importantly for your commitment. We would not be standing here were it not for that amazing team. Um, I go back like Tom, I was born here and many of you, a few blocks from here, 
uh, to put a little history on it, I played in this park when the tickets at the Flynn Theater were 25 cents. So we talk about evolution. Um, I played here, there was a canopy of absolutely exquisite elm trees. They went away, they were replaced. You've heard about different fountains. Different. We're in like the fourth generation here. This is natural evolution. The only constant in life is change. And what an exciting time to see this final change. The family here is dedicated to one thing to help the park, but there's a little memory I wanted to share with you all. Mom and Dad um, wanted the fountain and the handicap accessibility in memory of our sister, Anne Marie, who was a teacher of disabled, but she saw the world through a wheelchair. And to be able to now have this park, she would come and spend time at the farmer's market, and it was very challenging. The, the sidewalks were narrow, things were rough, but so to be able to participate for, with the community and the city to have a handicap accessible park of this magnitude. And the other fun thing, that fountain, not only is going to, you're going to see in a bit, Splash Park, we're getting a little practice now, but um, the Splash Park for, for children, but it's accessible to children in wheelchairs. And to me, that was magic. So our little part in this is to uh, enhance that, but I wanted to say thank you for everybody here and everybody. This has been a long road, but one worth traveling. Thank you. Well, hello. <laughs> um, well, first I want to start off by saying what an honor it is to be speaking here and representing an organization that I love so much. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Mile and I've worked at King Street Center for five years now. And one of the many things that made me fall in love with my job is the fact that King Street has always made it a point to be involved in our community as much as possible. Um, this park has been part of our daily walks with the toddlers for many years, and I don't know exactly know how many times, but we definitely have a lot of falls, laughs, uh, tantrums, and lots of moments of curiosity and growth motor exploration in this very park. By bringing King Street kids here of all ages, it becomes part of their community. And in return, we hope that it becomes part of the neighborhood their families also come to think of as their own, which is a place to gather, play, and enjoy. It is an iconic place in Burlington, Vermont, and we are extremely excited to be walking the toddlers through here again. Um, and a small story, we actually walked through here the other day while the fences were still up, and one of the toddlers went through, like, peeked through and was like, whoa. So I think the toddlers approve of the space, and thank you. Thank you, Mile. All right. Thank you all for sticking through this in the rain, a long program. We've got just two things to do to close out our program today. Um, uh, let's say, let's actually, three quick things to do. One, these benches help finance the park. Uh, Doreen, anyone who's interested in, in helping us get over the final kind of fundraising goal, uh, finish line, there are still opportunities. See Doreen and her her blue piece of information for, for more. Um, secondly, in a moment, we're gonna get asked for some help in launching the new fountain for the first time officially. And we are so happy to have a group from King Street here to, to help us do that. And they've been incredibly patient and uh, done a lot better than uh, I think my kids would have done uh, waiting here through this all. So we're gonna turn over to them in, in one moment. And then as soon as that's done, I just, I hope people will, will stay around and we're gonna try to do a socially distant group picture. Zach <coughs> Williamson um, will help us uh, lead us through that. So with that, let's go to the fountain and our King Street students. And I get here's where we're gonna do it. If you can help us, we're gonna uh, we're gonna count down from ten together. Ready? I'm gonna.
Thank you.